Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys today as I am starting to put together a new video series. So every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a new member orientation webinar. And at the end, I do a Q&A for new members in which, in which case they can ask me any questions. They can ask me anything and I'll answer in a Q&A uh, screen share style. And now I'm going to start recording these each week and putting them together for you guys. And it's just a really good way to kind of pick my brain or talk about really cool topics that is trading or MIC related. So I hope you guys enjoy. This is the start of a new series. And while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. All right, guys. So this is technically the first ever recorded Q and A that we're going to do at MIC. We are going to record these every single Wednesday at the end of my webinar, which is usually um, around um, you know two thirty to close Eastern Standard Time. Um, and let's open this up, man. So. We just finished the webinar. Uh, anybody that has questions right here, let's talk about some cool stuff, man. Any question that you guys have, please don't feel like you're bugging us or bothering us. Right, right here, I will answer. And then later at the end, I will talk about my main important things and what I like to do for my specific strategy of shorting or whatever it comes to. And then this is pretty much the structure of the webinar each week. And uh, I think we hit upon some cool stuff. So definitely write out some questions, guys, and whatever you want to talk about. Just want to say thank you guys are great. So happy I joined. Awesome, Joe. Dude, I'm so happy, man. And dude, guys, shout out Joe, man. Joe is in Thailand right now. It is literally like 1 or 2 a.m. for him. So thank you so much for coming, Joe. Again, man, every week we're here for you. We're here to literally <laughs> – it's hot over there, oh, man. Turn on the AC if you got it, buddy. Put a coconut in your hand, man, and relax. Yeah, thanks for coming today, guys. Thanks for coming, man. Seriously, this is just such a bonding experience. This is such an amazing experience for traders to kind of see what we're all about, um, see kind of like what MIC is about, what we talk about, and um, and just a way to kind of pick our brains, man. Because like, like I said, man, we've been doing this for a while. So if you guys have questions, you know, I would have killed – five years ago to have someone to talk to like myself or Austin who've been, who've been in the ringer for, for three or four, five years, man. It really is. Yeah. 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 Joe, post a chart in here, man. Feel free. You can use the plus sign and then your computer and then uh, whatever uh, PDF or uh, screenshot or light shot image that you want to post. So yeah, post something in here, man. We can talk about trades. We can talk about hard stops. We can talk about anything and then I'll get into kind of like my rule list. Hopefully you guys stayed safe today, man. XSPA was crazy. Grow zombie back. Man, a couple stocks went red. I know CPAH, TTNP. There wasn't enough meat on the bone for me to short those, but man, let me tell you something, dude. I wanted to. All right, so now we're looking at uh, we're looking at Joe's chart. You use the lines. I like it. You use the lines, man. Yep, nice. So the so the thing about lines, guys, is so everybody talks about lines, right? Like what are lines? Lines are specific support and resistance areas that the stock can bounce off of and or like, again, it's, it's literally what it says. Lines are support, they're resistance, and there's also the category of pivot lines. So specifically pivot lines, yeah, and areas of interest like Austin just said. So pivot lines are very key in the sense that it calculates certain levels that were resistance and support through days to come or... Um, you know, it's really good for low hangers. So like pivot lines are really, really good for like, um, if, if we use daily lines for day one, we are using the pivot lines for day two and day three. 
Oh, dude, I'm so glad to hear that, Big Sean. I'm, I'm glad that this place feels like home, man. That's awesome, bro. Yeah. And yeah, so check this out, guys. Big Sean and myself got on a – we got on a phone call yesterday. I do calls every day, 2.30 Eastern Standard Time till close. I'd say, what do you think, Sean? We talked for, for about 10, 15 minutes, and it was cool, man. I, I, I'm glad I got you on the right track, man. I really appreciate these calls. Um, I really appreciate you guys reaching out, man. It's huge for the success of uh, – every new member to yeah clear up some cobwebs man that's great it's all our jobs to get you on the right track so that's key but uh joe i, li I like your thinking man draw your lines respect your risk you set your bid at 305 and only came down to 309 you know that happens bro that's a good you know that's a good level that's a neckline snap right there if it breaks so these are the things that we kind of talk about on deadlines you know if this were to break man that is an unbelievably huge support and then, you know, these are what's called like neckline and deadline breaks, man, where we start to look to short. But here's the thing. If these things start ripping and teleporting off these, that is a support that is held. And then look what happened, man, when it quote unquote should have broken down under VWAP earlier, because I think VWAP was trading right above this level, because um, I can see my chart on my other monitor. Boom, teleport, man. So this is, again, guys, for those who maybe came in late or didn't hear, this is why hard stops are the most important thing of the day. And, and then like Alex just said, notice the time of day. Teleport candles happen at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time. After that first hour, man, when volume has maybe dried up or a stock is kind of broken down and it's just kind of teasing around VWAP, a lot of traders who don't trade the first hour because they're not short bias now look to go long these times. This is the time to either reevaluate your short, cut your short, or go long. And I'm telling you, there's so much made, there's so much money to be made on the long side of trading at 1030 if the requirement and if the criteria is there. And when it comes to hard stops, guys, if you didn't have a hard stop and you're short right here into this teleport candle, you're dead. You need to place a hard stop every single trade. So I didn't trade this today, but if I'm trading, you know, what is this? Like, um, this looks like a three, 360 level. If I'm short 360 and I'm giving myself a mental stop at 370, you think you're going to have time to respect that mental stop? No chance in hell. You need to put a stop in there. And here's the thing. If you put a limit market, or I'm sorry, a stop limit order, it is not always going to trigger, especially when you get ripped through with a teleport candle. So if you're short at say 360 and you put a limit order stop at, at 370, that thing is going to rush right through. You're not going to get filled. Your stop didn't get filled. You're, you're on the shitter and you come back and you are down a shit ton of money. You put a market hard stop in it. Here's the thing. You're going to get some slippage, but you are going to guarantee out at some level. So while it might not be 370, it might be 376, it might be 386, but you are going to be protected. And this is the way we keep traders safe in MIC. Again, I'll go through it again max loss on the day. If you have an account of 30,000 and you're respecting or you're not respecting mental stops, one trade can wipe you out when you can literally call up your broker and have them set a $500 maximum stop loss where they get you out every single day. This is called preservation of capital. Second, you have hard stops in, so you protect yourself. So if your broker isn't doing it, you're doing it. We have so many ways to protect ourselves as traders. And most traders do not look into these, think that they can be a hero. And here we are five years later telling you we do it in every single trade. Uh, let me go back through a little bit of these. I'm getting a little behind. I've been trading successfully and unsuccessfully for the past 15 years. Dimitri was somebody was in the military. Hey, thank you for your service. We'll stop right there and say thank you, buddy. And couldn't trade during it. That's very understandable. Uh, I've recently started again because I'm out of the military. Okay, awesome. I'm glad that you have a schedule that allows this. Uh, started May 10th, 2019. I've only had four losing days. I was green for the day and held on to one loser. Yeah, man. Dude, that happens. That happens, bro. That happens, that happens, that happens. So here's the thing at MIC, man. This is kind of the curriculum we do each day. The first hour is amazing for short selling. These overextended gap and craps. And then after that, in a zombie time, we like to either go long or wrap up shop if you're a short seller. So at 10.30 is the cutoff. Alex doesn't even, he do, we call our brokers 
And literally, like, we're brokered with Cobra. Dude, me and Alex call up Chris, and we're like, Chris, cut us off at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're done. We made our money. Protect your morning gains. Now, here's the key. You should always have a hard stop, but going into zombie hour, the three major rules. Yep, exactly. Alex didn't trade today. Look at that. Look at that. That is discipline, man. There was nothing that hit our criteria today, and I didn't trade today either, guys. That's the key. It's all about waiting and patiently for your setups and making sure you're following your process. So like I said, when zombie hour hits, here's what me and Alex do every single day. And, and we teach this, so every trader should do this. We short, we make our money in the first hour, we usually do pretty well. Here's the thing, we trade after 10.30, we're dead. And we know that because algorithms start stepping in, you know, retail traders start stepping out and, um, Dude, dude it, it, funds can come in, like big money can come in and basically computer money. So what we're doing is we are not only sizing down exponentially, we are using what's called much outer lines, literally much outer lines. So guys, just to you know, give you an example, if the top of a chart is $3 in the morning, like say that's the pre-market high, stock opens up at 250, right? $3, 250. If we nail a short, you know, from 250 down to 220, we're now waiting in zombie hour for even maybe even 270 to hit. So in zombie hour, you size down to protect your morning gains. You don't want to give up your morning. You use much outer lines just in case these algorithms step in and try to get you. And third, you put a hard stop. You are guaranteed to protect yourself almost every single day. It's literally like a guarantee. It's like a it's like a saving grace. So we're gonna teach this structure, we're gonna sound like broken records and instill this each day so you guys never, never are in danger of losing your accounts. And we've gotten pretty good at keeping people safe. Uh, let's, get, let's get back to this. So uh, to, 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 it seems like when there is a teleport candle, a retest is a gift to go long. Um, seen it a few times, XSPA, XSPA gave you a chance to go long after teleport candle. Here's what you don't wanna do though, Joe. Or who said that again? Um, oh, FX Edge. So let's see. I think Austin put it earlier. So here's the thing about a teleport candle, guys. This is an extraordinarily parabolic move. You don't want to chase this shit long. You want to wait for dips, if anything, if you even do want to long it. Because it, it, what this does is this squeezes out all the stuck shorts so or all the shorts that are in it, you know, or stuck shorts, whatever. It squeezes them out. So usually when I see a teleport candle like this, it usually comes back down and retests a lot of times. Oh, by the way, grow right now, G-R-O-W, is totally new high day and squeezing. This is zombies, man. This is this is zombie hour. You could have shorted like Bao did in the morning at the 175 area, covered 145, closed up shop, been done for the day. You go back to the pond and you give back coins. Uh, so again, back to this. So. XSPA, man, a lot of these come back down because everyone that should have been squeezed was squeezed. Now it's out, It's about profit taking and then we get to normal consolidation and price action and then you see if it is holding view up, if it is doing higher lows. And then these are what's called, pardon the expression, but these are called fuck you candles. You can call them teleport or fuck you candles to shorts. So when this thing is trading under view up and it should be breaking, quote unquote, breaking down, or quote unquote should, and it doesn't, this is terrible for shorts. Again, right here, what do you have? You have trading under VWAP, maybe shorts getting a little comfortable, especially after this decline, and then boom, a rip through VWAP, and just when it consolidated, and then boom, again. So this is all front side, guys. This is not backside trading. This is how we teach you to stay safe at MIC. Our structure is day ones, you want to long front side that are making new highs, that are you know, buy the dips until they don't work. You want to do the first bounce. Then you want to short only on day one. If you even do short day one, you want to short backside death lines. When a stock is cratered, when it's done, had, uh, let me pull this chart again, had XSPA, you know, cratered and death candled under three or even, you know, like, like right here, kind of the top at 280. Now that's backside. That's probably a death line. You see what I'm saying? So like, Again, I'd have to see the full chart and really go through this, but wait for backside, wait for death line. Those are the times, the over and under, that last support to get short, and those are the only safe plays on day ones for a short. Next, you want to focus on low hangers, man. Day two, you know, 
you should not be hitting excess PA today. It's a low float, it's micro float, it's like 1.7 million volume or uh, float or something like that. You wanna hit that tomorrow, if anything. So we teach you guys to stay safe then. Uh, you know, the, the, when the teleport happens, you know, Joe, it's not always just a big whale comes in. It's just, man, it's like, it, dude, it's just a rush of volume can come in, a ton of retail traders, and then once people get stuck, um, once people are stuck, it just becomes a domino effect of, of cover, 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 and then they're tripping over themselves, and it causes these big squeezes. So it's not always just one big order at all, but it can be. It totally can be. I was not watching the tape on this specifically today. Um, actually, I was in the bathroom when it happened. I came back, and I was like, holy shit, what happened? Um, yeah. Uh, we talked about that. Thank, yeah, thank you for your service, Dimitri. That's really cool, man. Seriously, thank you. Um, it's good to know these guys, man. It's cool to know that Dimitri was in the military. Now he can network with maybe other traders that were in the military and they can share that, that bond, that brotherhood. And, and you know, maybe he can find a tab partner that was, that was in the military as well. And you guys can definitely relate on an, on a level outside of trading. And that's the whole point of MIC, man, is to really find your brotherhood in this and find your specific brothers. You know, James and D Oliver will forever be my brothers because they're my tab partners, man. I know about their life. I know about the in, inner and outer workings of their personal life, who they're dating. Like you really learn how to become friends with random people. And isn't that what this is all about, man? You don't have to trade alone. You don't have to do this alone, man. Yeah, so Alex Day, man, force your brokerage to cut you off each day. If, even if he did, so if he didn't cut himself off at XS, XSPA, Here's what's gonna happen. I know Alex, I know myself, we're very similar. We are gonna see XSPA going from $2 to five, and guess what? It's, you know, it's 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're looking for a short, we get squeezed, dude. So you, you get FOMO, and this FOMO kills you, man. So patience is key in trading, but most importantly, following your rules, following your process, and knowing what works for you. Trading after 11 a.m. does not work for Alex, so he eliminates it from his trading. He's so consistent, so confident in his process before 11 that he makes enough money to cut himself off at that point. So now he doesn't lose. And here's the worst part about losing. You lose on XSPA on a dumb trade, your mental capital is fucked up, man. So then going into tomorrow, you, your ideal play shows up. You are now hesitant to put on the size because you are shell-shocked from the day before. So it's... it's process man it's process everything happens for a reason bro everything happens uh there are plenty of members who wait until 30 to go long yeah dude it, i'm telling you it's a fantastic strategy focus on your edge my edge is not longs alex edge is not longs but it can be done and a lot of members are went from absolutely inconsistent to totally consistent by doing that specific strategy and let me tell you guys we are like the number one place to promote the fact that I don't care whether you're short, biased, long biased, there are as many opportunities on both sides and we're gonna teach you how to maximize on either side. So you do not need to be a quote unquote cool short trader because that's the new thing and everybody's shorting. Screw that, man. Find what makes you money, master one niche, not 10 niches. You find one thing that works for you, maybe that's the first bounce. Maybe that's the depth candle setup. Maybe that's just low hangers. Maybe it's day three. Maybe you find this pattern in day three. And then you build bankroll from that, and then you venture out. Then you try to master other setups. But I'm telling you, it only takes one good trade a day, and usually it only takes one good setup to master to make money in this game. Consistency, build longevity, build confidence, and then venture out in the deeper waters and up your size later. And only do that with very small increments, 10%, 20% at a time. You should not be doubling down overnight because now you are going to get your ass caught when, when something like grow right now is you doubled size short at 170 because, yeah, I can bully this stock today. I've been green the last 30 days, and then you're dead, dude, because you're not, uh, you're not um, accustomed to being down more in the beginning. This is why size – you should up your size to the point of not noticing it. If you're using 500 shares for the first week, use 600 the next week. Don't use 1,000. 
these are the things that we teach you on how to progress and the evolution of a trader. And do never compare yourself to another trader. If you think you're comparing yourself to Aloha or Aloha's chapter 13, Alex's chapter 30, Bao's chapter 1000, you are doing yourself a disservice. The worst thing in life you can do, and specifically in trading, is say, whoa, dude, average Joe is doing phenomenal. I need to do phenomenal too. Bullshit. You're on your journey. You know, Joe's on his journey. Alex is on his journey. This Alex is on his journey. They are all different. I, you know, I, I have a friend um, that took eight years to get profitable, man. And guess what? He is now a monster now. So if he quit at the six-year mark, that would have been such a disservice to his future, man. This guy is absolutely a freaking phenom trader, and it took eight years to get profitable. So everybody's on their own journey. Holy shit, look at Grow, man. This is, this is amazing, man. This is amazing. I love it. This is going to spark, spark small caps up, man. Let's get some action for tomorrow. So that's good. That's good. Uh, yeah. So here's some videos, guys, archives of stuff, um, how to do, how to plan everything, man. If you're not planning, then uh, you're doing yourself the biggest disservice in the world. Uh, Chi Chi, is there a template on this site or exactly what you're referring to? I miss that. Thanks, Big Sean. This is mine, buddy. It's a PDF. I will post again later today. We're going to automate this. Uh, this is my main um, way to stay safe, the lessons I've learned over six years. And uh, I'm going to post this in chat as well. Uh, let's see. Yes, Joe, the death line is the number one way to know where not to long. The death line is where shorts are in control. Longs are, most importantly, jumping off the, the, the diving board, the deep end, man. They are absolutely screwed. It is the last support and the last like dental floss bit of hope for long. So that is the time to go short. Specifically, this is the only time to go short that is truly recommended for a day one move. Uh, yeah, dude, look at this. Alex didn't trade today. So guess what? He's relaxed to nail the shit out of XSPA tomorrow. And that, in a nutshell, is process. That is process. He trades XSPA today after 11 a.m. He breaks his process. He loses. He fucked himself over. And then guess what? Opportunity cost. Alex, hats off, buddy. Great discipline. Um, KP, in the bullish versus bearish checklist, it says higher insider ownership is better. Why is that? No, no, no. So there's ways to look at that, KP. There's ways depending on how you trade. So the reason why I don't like um, institutional ownership just in its own right with a high percentage, like anything over 30 or 40, 50, 60, 70% is because the thing about it, man, is it's not necessarily that it's so good for longs or so bad for shorts, but it can have a really manipulated feel to it because here's what happens. Algorithms are the majority basically like user in that. So now algorithms are faking you out all day. They're playing against each other and stocks tend to um, just kind of move in a, in a, in a very weird way. Like they just kind of trickle up and kind of like on a snail's pace up all the time. It's not fluid action. Like it's not these big parabolic moves or nice breakdowns or death line breaches like slam candles or death candles, whatever you want to call it. It's very controlled price action. And just when you think it's breaking down, then they grind it to new highs, or just when you think it's grinding up and it's good long, then they break it down. I just don't like things with big institutional ownership because algorithms are behind it and algorithms have an agenda. It is not based on organic human interaction of, of fear and panic because panic is what makes us money. So panic to the long side, panic to the, panic to the short side, it's using that stupidity moment that um, amateur traders or people with no idea or no business trading do, um, and then we get these moves that are predictable, and then patterns uh, present themselves, which we can lock money in and, and trade each day. So I don't like high institutional ownership, man, in any case. But I specifically do not like it for the short side. Let me make that very clear. I really do not like it for the short side. Uh, yeah, man, they screw shorts, dude. Uh, do, do, do. now I know who to hit on the death count. <laughs> sure, man. Yeah. Hit me up. Hit me up. I love death candles, man. That's my favorite. That's my favorite strategy, man. Death candles. Uh, big funds, big headaches for real retail, retail traders. Absolutely. Dude. dude. Yeah. Where the big money goes, I like to go the opposite. When the big money's involved, uh, just, dude, just go to easier setups, man. Yeah. Watch the videos as much as you can, pal. Seriously. 
sorry, it says more bearish and it says, yeah, so we covered that. Um, so let me get into a little bit of my rule list, guys. I really want to show this to you guys because I think this is so key. So, you know, I'll, I'll put this as a downloadable content in here, but I've got a, I've got a couple things in here that, that just have saved me time and time again. So when it comes to shorting, guys, and this is all short bias trading. This is like shorting 101, guys. You know, day one, micro floats, don't do it. Day one, if anything, just do a death line. Don't short micros. My biggest rule is don't short anything under 3 million flow. It's just not worth it because the, the one time that it gets you, man, it teleports freaking $2 and you're dead. I do not short phase two to three biotechs. I think they are some of my biggest career losses. I know Bow and Alex would say the same. Um, I like phase one trials. When it goes to two and three, it's just, it's, it's not recommended for a short. Again, you can break any of these rules if you want. That's up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to trade, but this is a great way to stay safe and to know at least what to avoid, but more importantly, what to really be cautious on. Um, and here's the thing, a lot of these things can be reverse engineered for a long. I do not short major acquisitions, no exception. Why would you be that dumb? If Jeff Bezos and Amazon are interested in OXBR or XSPA, dude, I'm not shorting that. Why, 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 why? I don't short uh, big uh, short float percentages. You can find this on FinBiz, 20% more, maybe even 15% is a lot. So I try to stay away from these. This is a lot of stuck shorts. A lot of guys can be uh, in trouble if this starts squeezing and moving. And then you get like XSPA type moves on stuff like this. I don't like recent reverse splits for the most part. Sometimes I hit them, but again, this is, um, this is where the pump jobs go. This is where a lot of... Uh, Pumpers go and then they pump these things up. They're usually micro floats, one to three million, even 700,000 um, float. And these things rip on air out of nowhere. So I don't really like these. They have a lot of teleport candles. But when they're dead, I mean, they are dead. So if you learn how to play these, um, it's up to you. I just don't like them. I do not short pre market ever. Completely up to you. I like intraday, man. When the intraday action has already conformed with enough volume to the pre market action, I don't like shorting pre market. Never short, guys. This is just dumb. Don't short 52 um, week high breakouts with a good catalyst. It's just, it's just dumb. It's just, the, the reason why it broke 52 week high, there's a reason behind that. It's a strong stock now. It's in good territory. Um, and don't short a stock making all time highs, man. Just look for the easy sell. Look for the low hangers, man, or low bangers, depending on what you want to call them. No shorting a major name attached. Like I said, Jeff Bezos, you know, maybe Walmart's attached, Whole Foods, you know. Whole Foods made it a headache for BLNK, you know, like a year ago before we started MIC. I remember me and Alex were trading that, and a lot of people were, and it was just a nightmare, man, because a big name was attached. Uh, do not open up a short position the last 30 minutes of the day, guys. This is just a recipe for disaster. A lot of these things go up in the last, yeah, yes, again, look at this, guys. Look at this comment. Look at this comment. This, reverse engineer. These are short, don't, you know, Do's and don't do. Well, these are don't do's for the short side. If you want to reverse engineer these, these are fantastic. Can be potentially fantastic for the long side. So, again, man, again, here's the resources. Uh, like I said, don't you know something's rising in the last thirty minutes of the day, guys. Um, it's just like like right now. You know, a lot of people are probably a lot of amateur shorts right now are probably looking at GROW grow right now. They're like, boom, new highs. It's up, I gotta short this because it's up. That's just dumb. You don't short things just because they're up and you do not add an ad and add and open up a short position in the last half an hour because something's up. It's just so stupid. Because you run the risk now of this squeezing you into the close and, and um, running up or walking up after hours for a gap up the next day. So this is one of the main rules to just know as a short seller. Wait for things breaking down and I like to close positions by this time, not open them. Uh, do not short after the fuck you candle, guys. These are huge. Like I said, these are teleports. These are huge um, signifiers for reversals. Um, let's see if I can get this bigger. One sec. Uh, so this was an example. This is like XSPA action today. These are these are fuck you candles, man. These are teleports. So should be breaking down, boom, boom, and then boom, you're caught. So just be careful of these things, man. Specifically under VWAP. They're way more um, important to avoid when they blast through you up. So if this would have went boom right here, it's just it could have gone all the way back to the highs. But you just want to be careful on this stuff. Again, this is a list to keep you safe.
um, and stuff that, you know, we've learned over years, man. We've, we've learned this stuff. We've been squeezed many times to help you guys not be squeezed. Um, Bible, 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 no, no, no. Don't short a stock with no meat. If, the, if it doesn't have meat to come down, don't short it. Please don't short it. Yep, agree to that, man. Me and Alex were talking about that recently. If a huge name is attached, dude, it ain't worth it. Um, Edson, <laughs> what's up, Edson? Nice to see you here, buddy. Smoothie gang, man. Edson likes smoothies like I do. I remember very clear AWX Friday, last 30 minutes went from three to 12, cost me 20K. O opens up at $30 the next fucking day, dude. Tell me something, Edson, thank you for that example, bro. I remember that as well, and let me tell you, opening up a short in the last 30 minutes, if you open up the wrong one, dude, you are dead. You are dead, it's a career ender. Bro, just be careful on swinging in the first part. Never swing micro floats. Do not swing things like two and three million shares. Everybody remembers things like KBIO. Be safe, man, be freaking safe. We're getting a nice pull here on XSPA. Take a look at this. If this goes under three, 380, that is a nice death candle slam, man. Pay attention to that, guys. That is some nice action right there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Alex, that was epic, man. Seriously. So uh, next, guys, next, guys. If you are a big cap trader, if you're a big cap guy, then, dude, trend is your friend, man. Small caps are a little bit different, and trend is important, of course, but, dude, do not fight trend on big caps, specifically short side, specifically long. I just wanted to include that in there. If you do not have a clear signal in the first 15 minutes of the open, you should not be trading until trend shows itself. This is key. This is huge. This has saved me a freaking fortune in the past. Guys, if you're new and you don't know what it's going to do out the gate, give it 15 minutes before starting out. No shorting any type of anticipation. What's anticipation? I'm going to anticipate a breakdown before it's showing it, it, it to me. I'm going to short XSPA before a death line breach in the anticipation it'll happen. Don't do that. If you're a short seller, wait for the confirmation. Wait for the slam and the five minute candle close under the death line. That is your cue to start hitting pops and unwind longs or unwind chat chasers that were currently or previously in the stock. This is huge. Just every trade you take, wait for confirmation. You know what, get it tattooed on your arm. Uh, no shorting without a hard stop, man. I'm telling you, do not place a trade and then not do a hard stop. Every trade I take, 30, three seconds later, if I, depending on how much time I have, maybe I'm trying to put an ad in and then, put your hard stops in, guys. Protect yourself, please. If you are a degenerate and have to short front side warning, only do what Alex does. Use 30% of your size and don't go all in, man. Save the rest for under VWAP. This is coming from Brett Steenbarger, one of the biggest training coaches in all of New York. Alex studied under him, dude. Dude, we learned the lessons from some of the best there is. We're not just touting this from no experience or random guys, man. One of the best trading coaches in the world said this and talks about this. So guys, if you're shorting front side, which I don't even recommend, 30%, man, 30%, 70% when you get your confirmation and you get your BWAP and longs are more in trouble. Uh, any one of these, again, I'll just give you a disclaimer. You can break any one of these rules if you're a degenerate and don't want the maximum level of safety. I'm not gonna tell you how to trade your own account. I'm just not gonna do that. These are my rules. These are T. Bradley 90s rules, Tosh Bradley. These are mine and my guidelines to stay, stay safe. I can leave you to the fountain of youth, but it's up to you to drink. I have given you the guide and things that work for us and ways to stay safe after six years, and I plan to be here for the next 90 years in the market. So um, do what you can to stay safe. And then, of course, Bow is always in the matrix. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is Neo or Bo, so to speak. Uh, so that's kind of that, guys. I just wanted to give you a really cool uh, just kind of rule list. Uh, help you guys out. I'll I'll post that again. So actually, here I'll just do it right now. Let's. Uh, where's my cheat sheet rule list? Cheat rules, boom. Cheat rules, guys. There you go. T Bradley ninety rules to stay safe. MIC members get it, man. We don't hide anything, man. You guys get anything we teach, man. I'm telling you, give you all the secrets that I can. <laughs> So you guys can download that pages document. Uh, what next, what next? Uh, yeah, yeah, we always do it. And I mean, nobody learns lessons the easy way, right? Really, I mean, 
you can if you join MIC early on and don't have to unlearn a bunch of shit. But I tell you, man, sometimes it takes that one loss to teach you for the rest of your life not to touch the stove when it is screaming that the boiling water is ready. Uh, front side, so Joe, front side is basically a trend more than VWAP, um, but it usually is over VWAP. So again, you know, if the trend is bullish with uh, higher low after higher low, it's making new highs, that is front side of a trade. The volume, it's main attention mover. Um, and it, front side is when longs are still in control. Uh, simply put, backside are when shorts are now in control. That's, that's the most simplest layman's terms to say. Uh, Alex, what's up, buddy? Uh, it's amazing how Alex went from throwing super size and anticipating from reducing size and waiting for confirmation or breach to the death line. Now he's killing it every day, stress free. Dude, I remember the days where Alex was throwing, and he'll tell you himself, man, where he was throwing, you know, 30 to 100,000 shares, but he was stressing them out daily, man. The way to go about life, and this is Alex's quote, is make the most of Oh, dude, literally, we were saying at the same time. Make the most amount of money with the least amount of stress. Dude, that is the best thing you can literally do. And here's the thing. He's making more money these days with less size. Guys, it's not size. Everybody wants to swing their dick and be the big dick and put their truck on big risers and, and show the world that they're the big boss. It ain't about that shit, dude. I know some really good traders throwing around extraordinary size. Guess what? They swing 10 up, 10 down, 12 up. 12,000 down. And guess what? I know guys in MIC that have been trading six months that are making more money, making $700 a day every freaking day. So do you want to swing your dick or do you want to be right? Now he trades one tenth his size and makes two times more money. Dude, it ain't about size, bro. It ain't about size. Only in the bedroom. Um, they can be the big bosses, nine. To, yep, but what about the tenth, bro? That tenth, you're Dead. Thank you for thank you for saying that, Alex. That's in your personal training. That's great, man. That's that's really good to know because I'm telling you guys, it ain't size. The the guy that wants to you know puff his chest and boast to the ladies, oh, I trade thirty thousand shares. Well, guess what? You take thirty thousand dollar losses too. So you want to use five and seven thousand shares a day, stress free. Make your seven hundred dollars to four grand a day. I'll take that any day of the week. Any day of the week. Anybody who thinks size is what's going to save them is delirious, or they're just uneducated in trading. And these are the things you learn at MIC, baby. How to maximize the most amount of money with the least amount of stress. <laughs> Man, I've been talking for a long ass time. You guys didn't want to talk? You guys have any more questions? Dude, these, we hit upon like literally every topic I think we could talk about. Tell me, guys, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Philly? Coming up, the one-year anniversary, guys, come to Philly. Come, come, come to Philly. I'm telling you, annual and lifetime members, guys, it's going to be it's gonna be an absolute blast. Bow is going to be trading live on Monday. We're going to show you guys how to do this in person. It is going to be so much fun. I cannot wait to meet you guys, man. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Hold on one sec. I will do that right now, pal. Uh, where is the oh you know what I'll do it later I, I got I gotta find it yeah I'll save it as a, I'll save it as a PDF and repost the uh, cheat sheet I'll post that in a little bit oh nice thank you thank you Sean Sean will do it see dude this is members helping members man this is what MIC is about baby dude this let me let me make this very clear MIC is nothing but a family community positive environment we don't nice thank you thank you buddy we do not we do not associate ourselves with negativity trolls of any kind if you find that in chat you reach out to me you send me a dm you send me an email tasha my investing we will eradicate that shit we are a family man this is a club guys this is a club this is not this is not a bar. Well, it kind of acts like a bar in after hours, but this is this is a family, guys. So, you know, we're here to support each other, man. We're here to help each other, man. Joe, if you need help, man, you reach out. We're going to help you, bro. I'm telling you. This is a place where you do not have to be shy. You can reach out. You can bug us all day because, quote, unquote, bugging us is not bugging us. There are no stupid questions, man. We have a team of very patient people. We remember what it was like to be new. We remember what it was like to know nothing. 
if I, I had a guy, yeah, man, I'm serious. If you, I had a guy, um, I won't say his name just because he's so new, he's still learning, and this is not a slight on him at all, man. I'm so glad he has. He thought DOS was a, was a brokerage, and I, and I had to clear it up for him and say, no, dude, DOS is a platform. DOS does not deal with PDT. The broker deals with PDT. That's just a platform that's a third party. And, and I want look, I never had someone to ask these questions to in the beginning. So that's why MIC is here. So you guys can understand this stuff. You're not bugging us. And this is not, this is not stupid questions, man. I didn't know what DOS was five years ago, man. Now I do. I didn't know what a clearing firm was. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Don't worry about it, man. The biggest way any member can pay us back, man, is just to help other members, man. We don't need money. We don't even need recognition. But you know what we need, man? We need a community of people helping people. So, Joe, when you kill it yourself, man, and you figure this out, just pass the elevator down, back down, man. To so the guy that needs help from you, Joe, that's what it's all about, buddy. Uh, it's, it's about helping the guys who need help. It's about helping, helping the little guy, man. So watch the videos, guys. Watch our curriculum. Do the things that keep me, Alex, Bao, Austin, Matt, Joe Kelly safe every single day. And I promise you'll have a really good structure. And here's the thing. Here's the last thing I did not talk about, which I want to kind of end this on. Everybody who's, you know, on Twitter will poo-poo a simulator or a paper account. Dude, screw that, man. Take ego out of this game. If you are learning trading, bro, and you are new, get a paper account, dude. There's no shame in that. You, I mean, don't, you know, don't hide your, don't post a bunch of charts on Twitter and tell everybody it's real money, but, you know, be honest. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with people that you're new, you're learning, you're paper trading. There's no shame, man. We're all new. And here's the thing about paper trading, man. For, like, if you paper trade for, like, the first, I don't know, two weeks to two months, depending on your timeline and how much you need, you will be able to try longs, shorts, death lines, first bounce, low hangers, day two, low hanging fruit, every kind of setup that you are going to start to realize what you're comfortable with. So when you move over, over to real money, you have a back-tested system that works for you. You have back-tested analytics. You know, Get a spreadsheet out and do – when you do make the switch, though, the, the only thing I would say is if you are going to do a simulator account, which I, I think you, every new trader should, you need, need, need to do exactly what you would do with real money. So if you have a $30,000 account, guys, you're not going to be throwing 50,000 shares. So be realistic. Start with 500 to 1,000 shares or what you would with real money. Because the only way you're going to make money coming from a simulator, like a DOS paper account or something, is to do exactly what you did that's realistic. Because you can't have a $2,000 account and throw 10,000 shares, guys. You just can't do that shit. It's too reckless. Um, so be realistic with what you use and backtest, 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 backtest. Uh, Alex, uh, all I have in my Twitter deck is MIC members or really reputable traders. All the rest is garbage and will play your mind. Well, unfortunately, these days, I used to love Twitter. Unfortunately, it has become really negative and it has become a lot of people trying to, you know, again, pump their chest and kind of pull their dick out and, and say, I'm the biggest guy on, on the planet and I'm the – it's not about that, guys. Just spread love, spread positivity, and help your fellow guy, man. That's all. That's what it's all about. Ooh, I'm tired. So I think I covered everything, guys. I'm going to give a, a couple more minutes if you guys have any last-minute questions that maybe I didn't cover, but this was awesome, man. This was, this was a really great session. I'm really glad you guys showed up today. We had a lot of people show up today. And uh, I'm going to do this every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and record the Q&A. So we can just keep talking about cool stuff, man. We can start, we can keep, keep just like a broken record, man. I want, to, I want this stuff to sink in. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for showing up, buddy. Great insight. My pleasure as always, man. I'm telling you. I love this stuff. I live for helping you guys out, man, and making sure you guys are safe. Till next week, guys. Joe, I applaud you, bro. It's like 2 a.m. where you're at, man. Go get some sleep, Joe. Go have a coconut from the tree and go to bed. <laughs> and come back refreshed tomorrow, pal. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, man. Aloha. Thank you as well, guys. Tune in tomorrow. So check this out. And climb that coconut tree at 2 a.m. <laughs> Guys, Aloha does a webinar tomorrow, Thursday, 
at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is phenomenal. I will be there. We will all be there and chat. Bring your questions. Aloha gives a fantastic weekly webinar. Uh, mine's on Wednesdays, and his is on Thursdays. So, guys, Austin's, Austin's got the stage tomorrow, man. Love you guys, man. See, see you next time. Till next week, buddy. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.